Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to the Mental Wellness Wake Up Show, a weekly podcast where growth minded, creative people come to learn best practices from both spirituality and psychology that create lasting well being. I am your host, mental wellness expert, improvised acting teacher, therapist, and coach, Dawn McMillan. Let's get to it. Beautiful humans. I've been on a lot of soapboxes in my personal life lately. I've been on about the importance of art, about community care versus self-care, about collaboration, about coming together. And ultimately, I just really fundamentally, profoundly believe we are better together. We are better in harmony. We are better in collaboration. We are better when we are equally as interested in the well-being of others as we are in ourselves. And I know that can be kind of la la la, Pollyanna, let's just all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. But and also, can we all just hold hands and sing Kumbaya? I read the news and I get so tempted to surrender to despair. We cannot surrender to despair. And so I seek those people, places, and things in which I find solace, in which I find like minds. And it's a really, this is a weird segue, but I'm go, I'm just going to go with it. I was listening to a Rob Bell, Robcast, and he was talking about he was doing an episode about an episode that he couldn't do and talking about how sometimes we are dying to something that is old and that transition into trying to create what is new sometimes is just awkward and weird and painful and unpredictable and how we just in that in-between space it can be so unsettling And I feel as though collectively we are in this space that is so unsettling. So in this moment, I just want to be a stand for gratitude for all of those people who are willing to be in it with us. Those people who share their their not so successful moments so that we feel less alone those people who are sharing those learnings, those people who are willing to communicate and collaborate. And I'm just, I'm just really grateful. So I just want to, I just wanted to share gratitude. I just want to share gratitude. I've been having some really beautiful experiences in the, in the space, the spaces I move in, the creative spaces that I move in, meeting new people, planting seeds for future creative projects, connecting with people I haven't talked to in a long time. And this is what I think gets us through all of the other challenges are those moments we lean into where someone shares something that lightens our load, or at least lets us know we're not alone. And when we connect with another being and we remember that most people are good people, most people want goodness in the world. It's important to remember that. It's important to remember that. And part of what else is on my mind is returning to this genuosity theme. It's really present for me and it's really calling me to explore more and to share more. A lot of these conversations that I have been having in these collaborative spaces really has been about being in alignment in coach spaces right now and spiritual spaces right now. You will hear a lot about being in alignment. And I think there's value in exploring what that might mean. I came across this great quote from a newsletter, I think, I've been holding on to it for a while. So don't quite remember its provenance and where it got it from. But here's here's the quote. When we use our willpower to achieve goals that do not spring out of us, but which we set for the sake of pleasing others or to fulfill a fantasy about who we are, we create a kind of monster, a mechanical man in which our living self is trapped 
We have all seen people who are held together by sheer willpower. The effort is enormous, but the result is hardly worth it. They aren't people we enjoy being with or who enjoy being with themselves. Newman and Berkowitz. (laughs) Just take that in for a second. When we use our willpower to achieve goals that do not spring out of us, but which we set for the sake of pleasing others or to fulfill a fantasy about who we are, we create a kind of monster. I know so many people, both in my professional life and in my personal life, who seem to be in some form of arrested development. They get under stress and they start reverting towards the things that worked for them in the past, usually in childhood. So I find myself interacting with people and it's almost as if the person that I'm interacting with is 14 years old, however many years they've lived on the planet. And when they get reverted, when their lack of safety, when their stress has them trying to go back in time to try and have some sort of understanding of how the world works and they go back to that age (laughs) Often it's the age at which a significant trauma occurs is the age at which we get stopped. When we get back into that frame of mind, because we are not operating from our full selves, we start to live out the fantasy that that one, that child had. So if we're, if we are stressed out and we revert back to an eight-year-old, we start trying to fulfill a fantasy about who that eight-year-old was hoping that grown-up version of them would be. We start looking around us and living out the fantasies that our parents or grandparents had for us. I have a lot of friends who are first or second generation immigrants to the United States. And there is a lot of pressure on first generation immigrants from some cultures to make their parents' sacrifice worth it. So you can be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Because by golly, they, what they went through to get you here so that you could have a better life. And when we find ourselves acting out these scripts that were given to us or the scripts that we have had implanted in us by the culture, we create a monster. I love that language. We create a monster, a mechanical man in which our living self is trapped. And so often when I'm working on my own blocks or when I'm working with other people, it's that sense of stuck. It's that sense of trapped. We feel trapped. And that is because we have created a prison based on fantasies and expectations that we did not choose that are true to who we actually are, that are not in alignment with our values. And I love what, what Newman and Berkowitz go on to say. They aren't people we enjoy being with or who enjoy being with themselves. I don't know if you've ever known anyone before and after they've come out of a closet of some kind. A person after, no matter how hard it was for them or what they have may, may have had to sacrifice in terms of disapproval from people in their lives, is a freer, more joyful person than the one who is in, in the closet. I've seen it over and over and over again. There is a sense in which denying our genuine, sincere, authentic selves is like trying to hold a beach ball underwater. You can do it as long as you're working really hard and your legs don't get tired from all the swimming. But as soon as you light up or you let up, boop, it pops to the surface suppressing ourselves, suppressing who we really are, suppressing what we really love, suppressing what we really hate, following scripts given to us by our ancestors, our relatives, our culture, our churches, our institutions, our fill in the blank, our Instagram feed. None of that is sustainable. And I believe that is why so many of us wake up in our quarter life crisis, our midlife crisis, Or when we achieve the thing we've been working so hard to get, and we ask the question, is this all there is? 
It's empty and it's disappointing because it is not ours. We have created a kind of monster, a mechanical man in which our living self is trapped. My curiosity, my question is, what does it take for us to be willing and able to unleash our genuine selves? And I am not, again, talking to you from the ball of light into which I have ascended because I'm just so supremely enlightened. (laughs) No. What I am talking to you from is that deep sense of questioning. Those of you who know me personally (laughs) know I've been wanting to change some things in my life and I haven't yet. Right. And I, and I did a whole episode on seven steps to get anything that you want. I know how to. So then the question becomes those things that I haven't changed. Why? Why? So part of what I think is going on with me and with you when we are stuck, when we are not changing things that can be changed, when we are exhausted all the time, when we are disappointed by our our accomplishments. I submit that the reason this is all going on is that we are working to achieve goals that have not sprung from within us. We have not chosen what we truly desire. We have not chosen what feels good to us in the moment or, or, We have changed so drastically that even the thing that made sense three months ago is no longer in alignment with who we are now. Can we give ourselves permission to change that rapidly? Can we give ourselves permission to say, yeah, I know that six months ago, this seemed like a great idea. I don't even recognize that person from six months ago because I have grown so much. I think about the state of the world over the last couple of years. And I think about who I was in March, 2020. Who are you in March of 2020? Who are you now? My mother died in 2020 and I got a dog. Those two things radically have changed my life. Not to mention, oh yeah, quit my job and got a promotion. <laughs> I had a relationship. It's gone. I've met people. I've, I've People have moved away. People have passed away. People have come. People have gone. Opinions have grown. But opinions have changed. The world has done things that I never dared to fear the world has done things I never knew were so beautiful and I could imagine. I've had opportunities that have transcended even my ability to dream up because I didn't know what I didn't know. I've changed radically and drastically since March of 2020. Maybe you have too. Maybe You have changed radically and drastically since March of 2022. And as I'm recording this, this is June of 2022. What if this process of being in alignment, this process of being genuine is a process of constant revelation? (laughs) There's a line from Citizen, the play I just directed. One of the characters says, the state of emergency is also always a state of emergence. What is seeking to emerge from you? What is seeking to emerge in your life, in your being, in your work, in your heart, in your worship, in your creativity? What is seeking to emerge? The world has been in a state of emergency for two years. Longer depending on where you are and who you are. A state of emergency is also always a state of emergence. 
what is seeking to emerge and how, how do we get into alignment with that? I've been thinking about this because this is what's up for me too, is the decision that I made in the past, the decision that I want to choose to abide by in this moment. And how do we balance consistency, steadfastness, loyalty, commitment with emergence, spontaneity, creativity, authenticity, genuosity? Who are you now? If you fired everyone and everything in your life, I mean everyone and everything, just go on this thought experiment with me. Erase it all from the color of the paint in your bedroom to the clothes that you wear, to the job that you do, to the person that you partner with, to the car that you drive, to all of it. If you fired all of it and considered one by one who and what, would you hire back in? Clean slate. Everyone and everything is gone. Who and what would you allow back in? Not just based on the fact that they were there before, but based on the person that you are now and the person that they are now or the thing that they are now, would you hire them back into your life? Would you? Would you? And if the answer is no, that's worth exploring, isn't it? What needs to change if um, you only dress in navy, tan, and navy's blue, and black, and you fired all your clothes, would there be some pink or some patterns or some orange or some violet? Maybe some white. (laughs) Who are you now? And what is in alignment with you now? How can you be the truest version of yourself? I had a coach that would say, ask yourself how to be the truest, bravest version of yourself. And I get why she said that. Because it can, change can take bravery. Change can take bravery. It can take courage. But setting that aside for a moment, because I'm not asking you to actually do anything except the thought experiment. I am not asking me to actually do anything except this thought experiment. Who are you now? What do you love? What are you tolerating? What is it time to let go of? Because people who are using their willpower to achieve goals that do not spring out of them aren't people we enjoy being with or who enjoy being with themselves. (laughs) You ever have to put yourself in a timeout? I have. Ever been so cranky you get on your own nerves? (laughs) That is no way to live in life. You don't want to be so cranky and out of alignment that you get on your own nerves. Who are you now? What do you love? What are you tolerating? What is it time to let go of? And what if, what if those things that you require to let go of in order to step into your genuosity, in order to step into the true and accurate version of yourself in this moment, what if letting all that stuff go really is a gift to everyone? What if that joy that gets unleashed as you unstuck yourself, unstick yourself, what if that's contagious? So many things are contagious. Emotions are contagious, right? You ever walk into a room and you feel like you can cut the tension with a knife? That's because emotions are just out there in the space. Ever have someone who just, when they're close to you, you're just like, ah, 
like your whole nervous system just down regulates a little bit. You're like, oh gosh, it feels so good to be around this person. I have one friend that makes me giggle, like just our energy together. Like we just giggle. <laughs> That's the vibe. We get together, we are grown women and we giggle. I have other friends where we get into that real sort of like whispery, sincere vocal fry kind of, yeah, I feel that way too. Or the ones who are, who you're like, let's drive a car to Mexico and see how much trouble we can get into. Right. We always have those vibes. Emotions are contagious. We are contagious. We are contagious. So what if getting in that alignment into that, this is what I love and I'm leaning into what I love and I am shifting what I was tolerating and letting go of what is no longer mine. What if that is contagious? What a gift to give the people around you. What a gift to give the planet. Who are you now? What do you love and how can you lean in to that in this moment with whatever you have available? All I have today are questions because the answers are not for me to give you. The answers are for you to give you. And I guarantee you, you have some. Here's a little tip. Ask yourself these questions as you're falling asleep and allow your mind to work on them. And when you wake up, grab your journal. You have a journal by your bed, right? Grab your journal and just jot down impressions. If you get a whole answer, awesome. If not, just jot it down. Um, I dreamt about my house in Oklahoma and there was a, a, a dog with uh, floppy ears and Bill Withers music playing in the basement, whatever. That's actually a dream I had <laughs> and jot that down, <laughs> just jot it down and begin to see what's emerging for you. From Claudia Rankin, the state of emergency is also always a state of emergence, things beautiful things are wanting to emerge from us right now. What if we let them? Oh, my beautiful humans, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful humans. Do you know how amazing you are? You are whole. You are perfect. You are complete. You are worthy and deserving of a life so glorious, it transcends your own imagination. Until next time. I am so honored that you share time with me. If you've listened this far, then something here was of value to you. Would you please be a friend of the podcast and share it with at least one other person? The podcast is available on most platforms, including YouTube, and I need your help to get the word out. So please like, subscribe, and share, and a five-star review on iTunes would be chef's kiss. Thank you so much. See you next time.